Jesus Christ. I think there's a lot of college football fans who are excited for Nick Saban to retire just because they had teams that were really good in the 2000, 2010s. But, but it seems like Georgia's on a run, though, now, right? Well, they've like, won one. I don't think you can really, like, say anything till maybe five years from now. Like, okay. And even if even if that's the case, like, Nick Saban at Alabama, that's like a multi-decade run of dominance that you can't declare Georgia is going to have anything close to that yet. They might. They're doing incredibly well, and they're set up for success in the future, but you can't say that yet. And so I think, like, Georgia's probably one of those teams, and, and surely, like, Michigan, uh, Notre Dame, even like teams that have had really solid teams over the last 15 years, but they happen to be playing at the same time that Alabama exists. And so you're just not going to win anything. Do you think Nick Saban's ever going to retire? Like that seems like one that's just, I've heard, I've heard people, college football reporters speculating that this was his last season already. And I don't know where that's coming from. Cause I haven't heard. He's not going out like any this. sort of indication from him that he wants to retire, but I have heard people speculating about it, Billy. If you were Nick Saban and you saw what was changing here, why would you want to keep going as, as everything, your advantages disappeared. Like the reason his genius in the pros was non-existent. He goes to college. He has no salary cap. He can make his coaching staff, uh, you know, 40 people large. And he realizes, and I've told you these stories before, he was running a business long before everyone else figured out that they were running the business. He wins the championship on the plane ride home. He is negotiating the next terms on everything he wants for his program because he had all the money advantages. Because they could somehow do it clean. Their machine was working. Mm. Nobody was getting caught. And now, all of a sudden, everyone can throw money. Why would he want to play? Why would he want to keep going? Because he's like the most competitive person yeah. alive. And because he's built something that he probably doesn't want to walk away from yet. I don't know what his future is. And I think that it's a little premature to be like writing his obituary when the season hasn't even ended yet. Like this is still, Oh, but they should, might, they it, could have lost five times this year. Yeah. Jessica. Georgia could have lost to Missouri. Like it's they also football. Could be undefeated, Sometimes Dan, you play and... close games and they don't like go your way. And normally they do go Alabama's way. They have an incredibly talented quarterback and they're missing a lot of the players at wide receiver on the outside on defense that they've had over the past few years. That has changed for Alabama that they don't have those guys right now. But I think it's a little premature to be like, well, Nick Saban can't win in this new college football era. It's like, ah, I'm not I'm not willing to say that. It's I'm like you with Tom, he can't. Tom Brady. I know, but I, I have heard this discussion about this Alabama team and how this is the first time since 2010 they've had two regular season losses and how like insane that is. In 12 years, they've never lost two regular season games, and now they've lost to Tennessee on the last play of the game and to LSU on the last play they of the game. They lost two games by a combined four points. Right, right? and and – and but the team doesn't. It's the team's not as good as his past teams. Like no, the, but those games are at Tennessee at LSU. Like I, he almost won guys, those games. I, right. I agree with you. Yeah. It could be a very like if you change a couple things and maybe they beat Tennessee, but they lose to Texas A and M. You know, like it's just it's been a weird season or for Texas. them. Or Texas, right? But I mean, I still think it's premature to make me to like make anything out of it other than like this team's missing a few pieces but who's to say they are not gonna i, I don't think year. it's so soon just because he's said how scared he is you can hear it well he signed a contract extension for 93.6 million dollars that runs through the 2030 <laughs> season so <laughs> not going anywhere is, he gonna be no. alive? Is, that, is that a fair That's, question like, Will he be that, alive by the end that, old. that he, well he's 71 so he looks great I he mean, does look great, but I mean the <laughs> the stress of coaching it can't be. Great. Look, I was saying James Franklin yesterday shouldn't be doing pushups at fifty, right? Nick Scraven does a lot of screaming at seventy one. That's like let's just you know think of the old ticker here. You know what I mean? Like what are we doing? Calm be down. Eighty years old in coaching. It's college football. There's precedent for it. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> a like, lot do of you precedent. do you think he's going to retire? Do you think that like. No. it will just end naturally or do you think something will come about at some point that it's like you gotta go because like he's been good for a really long time and and like to Jess's point like just because they're having an off year doesn't mean the game's passed them by like why would you think that they've been such a constant for like 20 years now where no one else, you'll have people come and go you'll have teams that they're good this year oh they're gonna be a dynasty and then Saban just eliminates them 
But Billy, he can make this money up just by if he wants to go on college game day. If he wants, but to I don't think it's about money. Though. Yeah, you, but I, someone would offer him a lot of money, though, right? But oh, you think yeah. that he's going to walk away? Like he's not going to admit the I don't think he's going to walk away. But if you're factoring in compensation, which I'm not, because he's made enough money and can make more if he did something else, then I don't think it's about that. I think it's about him being competitive. That's all. So it's interesting. Billy asked, like, would he walk away? Because this brings up the what I like to call the pickup paradox. You ever go play pickup basketball and you go there and you win two, three, four games in a row. And after a while, you're like, I'm tired. I want to stop. But like, no, I can't leave until someone beats me. Right. So now you're forcing yourself to win. But then when you lose, you say, well, I've got to avenge that loss. And so you're in this nonstop cycle. So do you think Saban is going to walk on top? Like, yo, I've won enough. I'm tired of this. Or is he going to walk after he's been beaten and just say, you know, this isn't fun anymore? If I may, because I do think you guys are skipping past in the entire time that they've been dominating the sport, they've never had a season where I thought they were going to lose five times. No, never- no, statistically, like they're having their worst season in over a decade, maybe like ever. Chris Falca had a really good stat on game day about like the margin of victory this season. And- the bear. Um, I, I don't remember what it was, but it basically said just that, like with, with what you're saying about like, oh, they're one play away from five and five or whatever it is like that's borne out in the statistics. It's not as good of a team as Alabama's used to. That is correct. I'm saying that I don't know if that means we can say anything other than this is not a great well, year for Alabama. I would oh, like but to I'd, see more I'd, data but that's, but I'd, that. I'd make the leap, though, from that. If you give me five Alabama games that are that close, one of them's against Texas A&M, which is three and six. Without their quarterback, you though, get, But right? you give me five of them, and I'm going to say, you know what? They don't have the talent advantage that they used to, period. Not comma. But like, you could period. fix it now in one season. But, but can but, but can he when everyone else has all the same tools that he now has? N- number one recruiting class slated right now in two four seven sports. But Bama Dan, does. Dan, that's my really? question. That's my question. Though. That's where the extension comes in. By the way, it's not uh, that doesn't really matter. It's just the perception of hey, Nick Saban's older, and that's how other schools may have the edge when it comes to negative recruiting. How how long is Nick Saban going to be there? Really, all he has to do is point to an extension. I'm going to be here till 2030. None of it matters. See, but then that's my question. You say I can't remember an Alabama season where they had five games where I felt like they could have lost it. I'm asking, does that push him to say, now I got to fix this because I ain't going out like this? Or does is that the flag in his mind that says, you know what, man? I think it pushes him. Is, I'm done. I don't think he wants to go out in a his season which he didn't make the college football play. His legacy is Cement- so cemented. I, yeah. The I only he, guy that could have that was possible of chasing him was Urban. But and, Mike, you think this is the way he would if he ended it right now? If he ends it in a month, you think this is the way? I don't imagine Nick Saban going out. And I don't imagine a Nick Saban ever going. Out. Right? <laughs> it's exactly. same. It's unfathomable yeah. to I, I, picture college football without Nick. I've Saban. heard a lot more chatter about it this year. I follow a lot of the same people that yeah. that. Jeff does and and in the recruiting circles too that's picked up a lot of uh, steam with regards to the auburn job which keep an eye on that because there are some shock names that they're actually working on condoleezza rice (laughs) that would be shocking no but i'm saying people have experience with the browns people look at auburn and they look at it as an opportunity to actually improve their situation so even though I know he's always viewed as an Alabama guy, keep an eye on Dabo, kind of back channeling. And if anything, you'll get another extension in Clemson out of it. But the Auburn job specifically, the sell is, and I know you've seen the facilities, they went super viral, is Nick Saban's going to be gone here in a couple of years. They seem to feel very strongly about it. But Dan, you're talking about Alabama losing their institutional advantage over college football by virtue of how Nick Saban dominated recruiting and NIL has completely opened it up. Wouldn't Nick Saban almost want to recreate those very same institutional advantages in this new era? Conquer NIL, conquer all the changes, conquer the transfer portal, and you eventually figure out how to take this sport over again. It's a completely new mold and a new model that you're going to have to follow in order to break it. Took him one off season to correct what was going on with Texas A&M, where Texas A&M had the number one recruiting class, and Alabama's doing very well right now. You can't do better than number one. I will say, though, th- you're seeing recruits flip. That's not necessarily something that would ever happen, and that's something that you have to come to grips with in the NIL age. Yes, they'll get most of the talent, they're not going to get all the talent, and it'll be spread a little bit more. 
But can he still say, like to recruits and point to this, hey, Jalen Hurts played here. Tua played here. Bryce Young played here. That guy, Derrick Henry, and, played here. Jalen Waddell played here. This is what I turn college players into. Yeah, the into. recruiting pitch yes. is still solid. And, and having all of the five stars doesn't mean you're going to win anything. Look at Texas A&M this season. Like, you can have those parts of the formula work for you, and you can ha- have the NIL collectives and be able to, like, get – you know, the recruiting pitch to these players and get them to your school. He's proven that he can actually coach these players and put them at in the NFL in droves. That hasn't changed. So I just think that might might this be kind of a dwindling of a of an empire for Alabama and Nick Saban? I don't think that I can say that. That's all I can say. I don't know. It just seems like a lot of rushing to a conclusion about something that's not even finished yet this season. Oh, but I don't even view it as an indictment of them or a one-year sample. I'm just saying if a game is to pass a 71-year-old by, I think you guys are being flippant about how difficult it is for a 71-year-old to be like, oh, I dominated this way. Oh, you want me to dominate over here this way? Okay, I'll do it this way over here. I'll change my ways. People people said the same thing about him, like, needing to freshen up his offense, and he brought Lane Kiffin in and did just that. Like, he's he's smart enough to know when he needs to bring people in to help him do the things to make the program and the team and the style of play relevant. That's that's where I trust. But I think Dan is saying eventually you arrive at an age where it's like, okay, maybe I can't do. I don't know what that age. I don't know what that age is. But if I put a set of ingredients in front of you, it'd look a lot like this. Like, I'm not saying it's so he will have he's built up such an advantage over everyone that he can skate three years after his death. They'll still be getting good recruiting classes, but they've come close to losing five times this year. And, and the, the advantages they used to have, and look at that schedule, because it hasn't shown anything yet. Like, that schedule, the teams they've beaten, you yawn at all of them. Not it, Mississippi. I think that was probably their b- biggest one of the season this past weekend. But, yeah, I mean, I think, Dan, to your point, there's old 70-year-olds and there's young 70-year-olds. Mm. There's 70-year-olds who are, like, on Facebook and they're spreading, like, conspiracy theories to, like, all their, like, 50-year-old kids. And then there's 70-year-olds who are, like, in a retirement home, and they play, uh, what's it? Parcheesi. Marchi- yeah, Parcheesi Shuffleboard. Marjong. I was thinking of that game cri- Cribbage. Cribbage. Cribbage, wow. yeah. Was, we all guessed cribbage. wrong. We are, we, five great old people I games. feel like Saban's, a, a, he, he hangs around 20-year-olds all day. I feel like he's a young 70, all right? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he's a young 70, and he's like, I still have a few more years. So he's on I'll Facebook. try to crack this code. The hair dye helps. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Snapface. I'm with you. He is a young 70. He's a, he's a yeah. young 70. He's been gray for 40 years.